You ready for the thirstiest move I ever made in my entire life? If, if I get to 20,000 subscribers on Instagram in the next 30 days this month, I'll do a giveaway of pretty much every single freaking thing in here, minus the things that I use, which is only the Mojito C4, the Mass Builder, and the Way and whatnot. But like all this can go. We can give away some of this Ice Tory stuff. I have been using the Biogro, by the way. But you know, I'll give a, I'll give a lot of stuff away. The thirst is real. Instagram at Nick Wright. NWB. I only post motivational awesomeness on there anyway. I don't do a bunch of BS of this is my food. But first, let me take a selfie. Nah, it's all cool stuff. You'll love it for real. At Nick Wright NWB. If I get there by the end of this month, I know I just said 30 days. We're changing it to the end of this month because the thirst is real. I'll give away all that and I'll divide it up to everybody. Burr! I don't even want to know how many dislikes that thirsty time Instagram plug just got me, but I do want to know how many Instagram likes it got me. <laughs> Check it out. My Nick Wright Live channel is my second channel, and it's a lot of philosophical talk. It's deep talk. Uh, a lot of you call it Elliot Hulse type of talk. It's exactly what I discuss with my personal friends and goes on in my head all the time. I never really share it too much, but I'm big into existentialism. I'm huge into the whole... Uh, if you guys know Eckhart Tolle, he's my hands down absolute favorite, I don't know what you would call that, life coach, uh, philosopher, whatever you want to call that subject of people, Eckhart Tolle is my absolute favorite and I'm obsessed with him. And There's a bunch of awesome names out there as far as books go. So a lot of my thinking is based around that, which most of you may not know. Uh, I haven't been too public with it, but I love it. That said, I wanted to kind of talk about an interesting subject that I was thinking about the other day when I was talking to somebody, um, and that is the whole subject of fear and how crazy fear really is of a thing. Now, this isn't going to be anything really too deep. I just mentioned the Nick Wright Live channel because I thought you guys might want to go check it out and see some of that content. But what made me think of mentioning that was the fact that this is kind of a different subject than you would typically hear in the average weightlifting conversation, but it's one that applies to weightlifting so strongly, and that's how... In, how insane fear is as far as the ways it sneaks into your mind in the most discreet ways you would never even think of. Things like doubt, things like double checking yourself, things like um, simply holding yourself back. You get a cool opportunity that seems like a long shot. I'm just probably going to pass it up just because, you know, what's the point? It's a lot of work going out there, this and that. Imagine if you didn't have any fear at all. You're born without the entire subject of fear. You would never be afraid to talk to another girl or guy in your life. You would never have any shame or embarrassment at all. So you could dance, you wouldn't care what you wore because you don't care about people not accepting you for your style. That's part of fear as well. You would never hold yourself back from any limits, any dream or goal you had. You would do 100% to get it. You would put yourself right out there and go and get it. You would never fail mentally at a lift because when you walk into that bar, if you ask yourself, oh, maybe do I need a spotter for this lift? You've pretty much already put the nail in the coffin for that lift as it is. You need to have the mentality that you've done this weight a dozen times, it's easy working set weight for you, even if it's a match you're just trying out for the very first time in your life. It's crazy to think about how strong the power of fear is because honestly, lack of fear is what also allows a sociopath to do what a sociopath does. Now, when it comes to the psychotic killing, that's obviously going to be the environment part of their upbringing. The whole nature versus nurture thing, that's usually a violent or traumatic thing that happened in their life that turns them into the violent side, but there's been a lot of uh, evidence showing that the whole mental premise of a sociopath, the whole predisposition to that is the fact that they're born without fear. That part of their brain doesn't really process. They don't get a sense of fear. And you don't have to be 100% sociopath to not have fear, but that trait can come out in a lot of different ways you don't realize. A lot of times, adrenaline junkies, um, like race car drivers, uh, skydivers, maybe not skydiving, but things that are very, very, very high risk that you could die in an instant that are very adrenaline junkie favorable tend to be done by people that have a lot of that lack of fear. Um, of course, again, there's, there's, there's other, there's other things that go in there like, um, poor, poor ad adrenaline and all that. There's little chemical imbalances and whatnot, but the point is no matter what the reason is, it all comes down to that fear is not there for them. And that comes into play a lot of times with soldiers, policemen, officers, everything. It can be good or bad. 
And on the negative side, the psychotic side, psychopaths aren't afraid to, to, to lie to people. The whole reason that you can be a good liar is you're not afraid of getting caught. Even without even really thinking about it. You can be a great liar, but if somebody starts questioning it, you have that fear that goes on in the back of your head. It's almost uncontrollable. Oh, what if they catch me in this lie? What if they don't believe me? They're not going to believe me. I'm going to get caught. The whole fear of uh, getting caught if you're trying to smuggle something through the border or through an airport, you start sweating and get all nervous because you're like, oh, they're going to catch me. That's fear. So it's crazy how much fear will dictate our actions and limit us. And sometimes the limitations are good. That fear stops a lot of us from lying for our own benefit, from conning people, from killing ourselves by doing incredibly stupid junkie, uh, adrenaline junkie stunts. But at the same time, it limits us in a bad way. Most of the time, uh, we, especially as Americans who have been trained to just be good workers in the system, deal with midlife crisis and feeling down and depressed around midlife age is because we settle so much for mediocrity. And a lot of that is because most of us, myself included in many different occasions, it happens to almost all of us, are afraid at some point in some way. Most of us have no clue it's fear. We don't know that it's even fear. You would you would point a trade out to somebody and they would never in a million years say, that's not, that, that, that's not fear. That's not, I'm not afraid, I'm just this and that, and they'll give you all these other reasons, but all these other reasons come down to something, some form of hesitance or confidence or lack of confidence, and that all leads to fear. Controlling people, people that have to be in control all the time, that's fear. That's a form of insecurity, it's a form of a, shallow, uh, a, a breakable ego, that's all a form of fear. So fear is a really crazy thing, and fear will absolutely make or break you when it comes to weight training as well. So... Again, it can be good or bad. You can be afraid to jump on steroids to get to that next level. Perhaps that's my reason for not going to steroids. Uh, that could very well be. I'm afraid of losing my natural testosterone production in the future, spending the money on it, having to deal with the psychological addiction of coming off of it and wanting to go back on and do more and more and more. That could be a fair thing. At the same time, someone could look at it as a good thing. I'm saving my health. But it definitely comes into play with your lifts. You need to have that no fear mentality when it comes up to lifting. You need to have that no fear mentality when it comes into diving into bodybuilding, powerlifting, or whatever your goal is to take it all the way to the top. It literally takes no fear. So the more you can simply acknowledge your fear, you can't, you're a human. You can't just make it disappear. But what we can do is just try to simply identify it, try to acknowledge it. The next time you feel any sort of hesitance towards anything, okay, and it can come in different forms. It can come in shame, embarrassment, doubt, um, nervousness, anytime you feel any of those, any sort of hesitance, think for a second what you're actually feeling and be honest with yourself. And I just did a video on Nick Wright Live about how being honest with yourself is really, really hard and it's another thing we don't realize we're not doing. But be honest with yourself and identify, okay, I'm afraid of this. And it'll probably have to be a more roundabout way. Okay, I'm a little embarrassed because I'm worried about this. Or I'm worried because I'm worried about they say. I'm worried about what they say because I want their judgment to affect my identity. And if you keep breaking it down like that, it's all going to come down to fear in some way, shape, or form. So work on it socially, of course, but most definitely work on it in the gym. Do not be afraid. Get under the weight and do it. Don't think about it. Do it. That is also the reason why you hear those crazy stories about people having adrenaline rushes and mothers lifting cars off of babies. And who knows how much of those are true or false or proven and whatnot. But the point is you do see and hear people doing pretty miraculous physical things when they have an adrenaline rush. And why? Because there's no fear. They're not thinking. Thinking is the worst possible enemy <laughs> to our brains. Thinking is almost always negative. It's always thinking about what could happen, what could go wrong, why we shouldn't do something. They don't think, they just do, and there's no fear or second guessing or doubt or hesitance there at all. And essentially, if you can get your fear all the way down, that's what you're left with. Subscribe now for more, and please like my Instagram. Buy a t-shirt, nwblifestyle.com in the info box below. Tank tops, t-shirts, hoodies, dog tags, you name it. Support and represent the lifestyle you live.